Hi everyone, Lisa here from Fireside Strategic. Welcome to our video cast, Humanity Builds Better Businesses, where we celebrate leaders that do transformational work within organizations, helping their clients grow and lead teams with humanity. Today, I'm chatting with Tess Fialka, owner of Angle Coaching and Communication and internal corporate coach at O'Shea Builders. Her specialization is leadership development, coaching, training, and communication. Tess, thank you so much for joining me today. My pleasure, Lisa. I can't wait to chat with you. I would love to start off by just understanding a little bit more about your work. In particular, you know, the word leadership development, it can mean so many different things. What does it mean to you? What is it? Mm -hmm. Well, I think for me, what it really is, is it's the, this intentionality about helping leaders to step into their full capacity it's kind of like, um, you know, I like, I like to say that, I, that I, um, I light a fire under your potential so that you can burn down the teeny tiny little box that you folded yourself into. So beautiful. So, <laughs> yeah, it's just, and, you know, the, the thing is, you know, leaders, leaders have all of this capacity and all of this potential, but oftentimes they're operating in, in truly what is a teeny tiny little box and, and old paradigms and outdated paradigms and so. That's what I like to do. So how do you do that? How do you light this fire? Well, you know, from a practical, a really practical standpoint, I mean, there are multiple tools that I use when I work with leaders. You know, as a coach, I'll use Leadership Circle 360. That's um, a really valuable tool for helping leaders to identify, okay, how am I showing up with my team and where are my strengths that I can really leverage and lean into? And then what are some of the, the Achilles heels that, that are holding me back? And for, for leaders, oftentimes um, organizations promote people into leadership or higher positions because they're really good in the position they had, right? And so um, they're rock star, you know, let's just take an accountant, for example, somebody who's a rock star accountant. And, and I'll tell you what, they, they don't miss a decimal point. And an organization is thinking, wow, if this person were our CFO, or if they're in a management, we put them in a management position, and then everyone around them is going to be just as good. And then that doesn't happen because not because that person isn't fully capable of becoming a leader, but they haven't developed the competencies that leaders need to really effectively get things done through others. Wow. Well, I love how on one hand, it feels like such a big idea, but on the other hand, there's such practical tools to help people step outside kind of their constraints and be better. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, you know, and it's the idea of, you know, this idea of, of if I can just get 1% better every day, you know, you, you know we're, we're not looking for, you know, boiling the ocean. Right. But if leaders can be intentional about what, what's, what's the one thing that I'm going to work on today that I'm going to be intentional and about and really lean into that, then with each day, they just, they just raise that bar just a little higher and a little higher. Step by step. I mm -hmm. love it. You break it down. You make it accessible. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what, what impact does that end up having on their organizations? Mm -hmm. Well, it is really interesting because, um, you know, what, what the data, data show us is that, um, so in organizations that are um, truly, truly effective and impactful, and if you just look at profitability, Okay, so organizations where your where the leaders are, they might be technical experts and really good at what they do. They're driven. They can assimilate information well. Okay, but they haven't developed those leadership competencies where they can build a team, where they can express that you know they they actually can empathize with people, that they can hold people accountable in a way where it is not a command and control approach, but where it's, this is what we are all trying to accomplish together in terms of this, helping them align with a bigger picture. And um, so, so these other competencies that are 
not about what am I doing, but what are we doing as an organization? Does that make sense? Yeah, that's such an incredible shift in the way that people think in general. I think we're so accustomed to worrying about ourselves. How am I showing up? How am I performing? What am I doing? And you're Mm -hmm. completely transforming the way that people think to be more collective. And Mm -hmm. I can see how that has an incredible impact on the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, and just just the whole idea of the leader, um, the leader as coach, uh, the leader as somebody who is operating from a space of humble, hungry, smart, to quote uh, Patrick Lencioni, and um, the, uh, where you know, they are, there's genuine humility there and recognition that even though this person might have the title, they don't have all the answers. And that, yeah, they're, they're clearing the way where, where the, team, the team can collectively move the organization toward it, its, its goals. I love that. So I'd love to take a step back and understand Mm -hmm. your why. Why do you do this work? What is your mission? Yeah, well, you know, it it just really is um, a passion for me. And it's something that that came out of it. So my my first career was in um, marketing and public relations. And I went into business for myself after about 12 years of being in the, in the corporate world. And uh, what, I, what I discovered pretty quickly is that, so organizations would hire me and, you know, there'd, do, there'd be a marketing public relations campaign or whatever. And, and then, you know, it would, it would run its course. It would be, you know, they'd get results and all of that. And then three months later, it's like, okay, well, what happened? And it, you, what I realized is that, you know, organizations can spend all this money on marketing and public relations, but if you aren't investing in your people so that they can actually deliver on what it is you're saying and that they can truly connect to what's the mission, what's the vision, what's my role in this, and be passionate about it, then organizations will be right, where, right back where they started. So, so in that time period that I moved into training and development, and um, the um, one of my clients when I was an independent was a management consulting company out of uh, California, national company. And so in my work with them, I really developed a passion for leadership and developing leaders, not, not just C-suite leaders, but, but in our organization. So, so as you mentioned, I'm also an internal coach for O'Shea Builders. And so we have a philosophy that everyone is a leader, okay? It's, you know, we encourage leadership at every, every level. It's not your rank, it's your behavior. And that's what leadership is. You know, what is your behavior? And so, um, you know, and, and to finish that, you know, here it's all about collaboration, communication and motivation. And this recognition that, that leadership happens absolutely throughout the organization and cultivating a leadership mindset at every level yeah, that's huge. I can imagine that's so empowering. It's, you know, we're so used to thinking of the C-suite as the leaders. They are the ones that make decisions. But realistically, if everyone throughout the organization sees themselves as a leader, I can imagine that could be so empowering and so inspiring. People will take ownership over the outcome they have. Right. Exactly. Exactly. It is, and it is that ownership. And, and it's, you know, to use the the cliche of everyone's rowing in the same direction because they feel appreciated. They feel recognized. They, they know that they're part of something bigger than themselves and they, they have a voice. They can be heard. That's so important. And you know, when you look at it from a business standpoint, on one hand, you have this like beautiful impact on the culture. People I'm sure are much happier in a place like this. Mm -hmm. But then there's also the side that, I can imagine this reflects on the bottom line, a business that has employees that see the direction in which everyone is rowing in the same mm-hmm. direction, mm-hmm. that will, it will accelerate so much faster. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, and the other thing from a really practical standpoint is this concept of attrition. So when, when you have team members who feel appreciated and they feel recognized and they feel empowered to lead in whatever capacity that is, you know, whether that's in a project, whether that's in, um, in a team meeting, whatever that is, is, you know, they can love what they do and they can feel valued every single day. And so 
the ability for an organization to to recruit and hire and hold on to good people, you know, those are essential essential to the success of the organization and profitability. Something I'm curious about is, so you're an in internal coach at O'Shea and you also mm -hmm. have your own practice. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the difference between what it's like to work as an internal coach and be really embedded in an organization versus coaching more independently? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so you know, there, there are um, joys and challenges to both, right? Okay, so, so as an internal coach, the, um, you, I really understand you know, what is the mission of the organization and I'm as passionate about, about that mission, you know, of, of, and the vision of the organization. And so, so at O'Shea, you know, our vision is, is to build a team so great that we inspire client loyalty. And so as an internal coach, that's extremely empowering for me. And so from a really practical standpoint in the organization um, and from the standpoint of we want to encourage leadership at every level, then I work oftentimes both one-on-one -on -one with people and also with teams. I'll work with, with intact teams in helping them to, to identify, um, you know, it, what, what are their goals and, and how are they working toward that? And how are they, how do they have each other's back and what's their team dynamic? And, and the, um, that can be very much from, from a team and strategy approach. And then the individual coaching is often very targeted toward how, how are we helping this person to develop those core leadership competencies that are going to help them transition from individual performer and somebody who might be in a project engineer position into project manager position and what's that going to require of them? So, so that's sort of the internal corporate side of it. And then I also do a, um, a fair amount of, of training around crucial conversations and emotional intelligence and those kinds of things. Now, my external practice is I tend to attract um, leaders who are in transition. And um, oftentimes, you know, these are folks who, who maybe they have moved into a, a new role and they don't, they're not being as, they're not as effective as they want to be. And so, so I help them identify, you know, what are the things that are getting in the way and, and we, uh, we will do through. We'll go through a variety of uh, fieldwork exercises and things like that to help them identify those things. And then, also, somebody who's in transition, like they're not happy in their current position. They know that they want to move into another another job, another career, but they're not entirely sure what that looks like. And so, so those tend to be the clients that that I tend to attract the most. That makes sense. And I love the differences between those two. Um, what does the future hold for you? How are you hoping to develop your practice? So, yeah, that that is um, I'm really, really passionate about working with women and um, working with with uh, women who want to step more fully into their, their full potential as leaders. And that's an area where um, I am creating some individual groups or not individual groups, but some, some group coaching experiences. I have um, a, um, I'm playing with the soul and science of, of um, leadership for women. And that is a, uh, a 12 week program where it's, it, we go through a variety of assessments and, and we have some, some trainings. And then we also have some coaching and some visioning and, and identifying the ways in which we self-sabotage. And so I'm, I'm working on building that. And so I really see this as, something where I do individual coaching, but also a fair amount of group coaching. And what is that gonna look like, let's say a year from now? Yeah, so, so I think there's, there's a lot of potential. I, well, I'm really, I will say, I, I love to be in the same space as, as people. I, I love the, the, when we can all be in a room, that's huge. Of course, we, we're all missing that. But the <laughs> ability to, do some smaller version, more concentrated version virtually, then the impact can be, can be greater and can be more widespread. I so I see that. both, you know, developing the virtual side of it and then also continuing to build the, the in-person side of it. I love that. I think the work you're doing with women is so important. You know, I've spent virtually my entire career in very male dominated industries and, mm -hmm. 
there are still there's still so much work to do. There's still yes. so much work to do to empower women, to help mm-hmm. women step into leadership roles, um, to help organizations bring women up into leadership roles. Mm-hmm. And I, I couldn't align more with your mission with the yes. work. Yes. Well, and there's a lot of work done by Tara Moore and, and she talks about how women play small and, and women do play small. And, you know, it's the whole thing, you know, what I opened up with, you know, this, you know, I, I want to light a fire under your potential so that you'll burn down the teeny tiny little box that you're, that you're folding yourself into. And I see that so much with, with, with women and, and the ways in which frankly, women self-sabotage. And so helping them to spot, you know, how, what are the ways in which I am self-sabotaging and how do I let go of that and step into what I'm really capable of? Because what I'm really capable of is really impressive and extremely impactful. That's really beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. I think that the way that you do it is also so, it's very human. Mm -hmm. And I think rather than leaning into an approach with a lot of push and aggression and pull, it seems like you're really seeing people for who they are and meeting them where they are and helping them take these step-by-step changes to unlock the stuff that's been holding them back. And I'm very impressed with how you're doing such big work, but in a way that is accessible. Mm -hmm. Accessible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that is the beauty of coaching and and where coaching is going, it is really becoming much more accessible to a much wider and and broader audience. And, and, you know, that, that is a really cool thing because, you know, it's, we all kind of need a guide on the side to help us, you know, navigate, you know, spot, spot the, you know, the, the, the branches that are in our way, the boulders that are in our way and, and help us find our way, navigate around them. And, and, you know, as a, as a coach, a coach is not a consultant. A coach doesn't tell you what to do. And a coach helps you discover, you know, what's going to work best for you based on who you are, based on your values and the contribution that you're wanting to make in this one short life that you've been given. Beautifully personalized. And I'm glad that coaching is growing in organizations. That's really what's going to build a better business world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, look, Tess, as we come towards the end of our time, we talked about really serious stuff. We talked a lot about business, about things holding people back and how you help them. But I love to end these interviews on a lighter note. So I'm Mm -hmm. curious, when you're not coaching, when you're not helping with leadership development and communication, Mm -hmm. what do you like to do for fun? Oh, gosh. Well, I, well I, I love to hike and, and I love to go visit my son who lives in Denver and um, spend time with my daughter who lives in uh, St. Louis. And then um, I um, love to cook and my husband and I, uh, we, we like to travel and, and I'm, I am a, I have, um, I have admittedly a sickness. I am addicted to books and I love to read and I have way too many books and I'm always ordering books and listening to podcasts and listening to audiobooks And, and so, uh, I am a, uh, I'm a serial learner. So, uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. You're a lifelong <laughs> learner and adventurer. What a beautiful way to be. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, look, Tess, thank you so much for joining us today. I think your approach to solving the challenges that all of many companies face is really elegant and extremely intelligent and very sharp. And thank you for sharing your insights. Well, Lisa, thank you so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. This has been a blast.